Hello, and welcome to this session about having a healthy diet during your pregnancy. We will cover these subjects during this session. What is a healthy diet? The Eat Well Plate, according to Canada's new food guide. Vitamin supplements, foods to avoid during pregnancy, preventing food poisoning, and weight gain during pregnancy. First of all, let's review the concept of a healthy diet. A good nutrition follows the recommendations of Canada's food guides and contains various tasteful foods, a lot of fruits and vegetables, high fiber products, fish and quality fats, and as little foods of low nutritional value as possible. The recommendations are very similar for pregnant women. However, a healthy and varied diet rich in nutritious elements is important for the baby they are carrying as much as for themselves. These other principles of healthy eating also apply. Eat regularly. This means at least three meals per day and snacks in order to prevent losses of energy. Do not skip meals, including breakfast. The first meal of the day is important to restore glycemia blood sugar. Drink a lot of water and drink often to remain well hydrated. Eat dietary fibers to help the action of bowels. And of course, Eat slowly and enjoy your food. There are many advantages to having a healthy diet. It contributes to the baby's health and development by providing it with the necessary nutrients. It reduces the risk of suffering from health problems such as hypertension, anemia, etc. It helps the mother gain the ideal weight during pregnancy. It helps you feel good in your body. It lets the mother store nutritious elements that she and the baby will need after birth. It contributes to the whole family adopting healthy eating habits. Cook more often. Plan what you eat. Involve other members of the family in planning and preparing meals. Enjoy your food. Culture and food traditions can be a part of healthy eating. Have your meals in good company. Be mindful of your eating habits. Take time to eat. Notice when you are hungry and when you are full. Use these suggestions to figure out if you are hungry or if you are full. Pay attention and ask yourself if you are really hungry. Understand that eating under the effect of emotions may influence your food choices. Pay attention to the feeling of being full to help you figure out when you have eaten enough. Give your body time to digest and feel full before deciding to have another portion. Pay attention to your eating environment and remember that you may be eating because of the accessibility of food and not because you are hungry. Eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, whole grain foods and protein foods. Choose plant-based protein foods more often. Choose foods with healthy fat instead of saturated fats. Limit highly processed food. If you choose these foods, eat them less often and in smaller amounts. Prepare meals and snacks using ingredients that have little to no added sodium, sugar, or saturated fat. Choose healthier menu options when eating out. Make water your drink of choice. Replace sugary drinks with water. Read food labels to help you make better choices. Be aware that food marketing can influence your choices. The Eat Well Plate is a good, easy-to-use tool to help you eat balanced meals. Half your plate is made up of fruits and vegetables. A quarter of your plate is made up of whole grain foods. A quarter of your plate is made up for protein foods. Did you know that your diet during pregnancy could influence your baby's tastes? When it's in its mother's womb, the fetus perceives food taste through the amniotic fluid. It will keep that memory and an interest for these foods during its childhood. Eating a variety of foods will influence the baby's tastes. Is it true that a pregnant woman should eat twice as much? This statement is actually false. During a pregnancy, the development of the fetus and maternal tissues require a greater amount of nutrients. However, hormonal and metabolic changes that come with a pregnancy generate a more effective use of nutrients. As such, the recommended intake of many nutrients is the same for pregnant and non-pregnant women. Caloric needs gradually increase during the pregnancy. During the first few weeks, they are the same as before the woman was pregnant. 
An increase in calorie intake is recommended starting at the second trimester, starting at the 15th week. The amount of additional calories needed varies from person to person, which means that it is important to listen to your signs that you are hungry or full. If you have concerns, you can be referred in nutrition. It is important to discuss this with your physician. Folic acid plays an essential role in the development of new cells, and it reduces the risk of malformation in the baby. As a greater intake is needed as soon as the pregnancy starts, we recommend that women take folic acid supplements even before getting pregnant and then during the whole pregnancy. It is recommended that the supplement be taken as a multivitamin that also contains iron. During the pregnancy, the body needs an iron increase significantly. Because of the increase in the volume of blood and the related increase in hemoglobin mass. To support the development of the fetus and placenta. To allow the fetus to build up the iron reserves it will need for the next six months of life. It is important to only take a single multivitamin dose per day. The dose recommended by your physician. Adverse side effects may occur if the daily dose is too high. Folic acid and iron can also be found in our diet. The main sources of folic acid are fortified cereal products, bread, cereals, and pasta, green vegetables, spinach, romaine lettuce, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts, legumes, lentils, and dried beans, oranges, and orange juice. As for iron, it can be found as hemi-iron in animal foods, meat, poultry, shellfish, fish, and eggs and as non-hemi-iron in plant-based foods, cereals, fortified pasta, nuts and seeds, legumes, and eggs. It is important to note that hemi-iron is better absorbed by the body. In order to better absorb iron, it is recommended that a source of vitamin C also be consumed, orange, bell pepper, broccoli, etc. Try to avoid drinking tea or coffee during or immediately after the meal, they contain substances that reduce the body's absorption of iron. Contaminants and other substances contained in certain foods may have negative effects on the health of the mother and the baby. Because of all the changes happening in your body, your unborn baby and yourself are more at risk of food poisoning. Your immune system is weaker and has a harder time fighting infections. It is therefore important to remain vigilant while preparing and eating certain foods. Let us touch on the subject with a short quiz. True or false? I can eat liver as a source of iron during my pregnancy. The answer is false. Liver is an excellent source of iron. However, it is not recommended during pregnancy because of its high vitamin A content. In most types of liver, the vitamin A contained in a single portion exceeds the tolerable upper intake level set for women of childbearing age. Vitamin A has many important roles in the organism. It contributes to a good eyesight, helps the development of bones and teeth, contributes to a healthy skin and mucous membranes, and protects against infections. Therefore, consuming enough vitamin A is important. However, if consumed in excess amounts, it can cause cognitive malformations in the fetus. As such, we recommend that pregnant women and those who intend to get pregnant avoid foods with a high content of retinol, mainly liver and fish liver oil, and only take a single daily dose of prenatal multivitamins. True or false? I should not eat fish when I'm pregnant. The answer is false. Let us examine why. Some fish are rich in omega-3 and contribute to the development of the baby's brain and eyes. It is recommended that you consume fish that contains high levels of omega-3 twice a week or more. Opt for cooked fish with low concentrations of mercury, such as canned light tuna, plaice, salmon, trout, and many more. Reduce your consumption of fish that contains high concentrations of mercury to twice per month. Shark fresh or frozen tuna, and others. Mercury is highly volatile and can therefore travel great distances in the air before settling. In water, it is transformed into methylmercury, the most harmful form of mercury. 
It builds up in the flesh of fish that sometimes absorb it from the water, but especially after eating other fish that contain mercury. As a result, flesh from the predatory fish that feeds on other fish usually contains more mercury than the flesh of a fish that feeds on insects or plankton. Similarly, the bigger a fish gets, the higher its mercury concentration gets. High concentrations of mercury can harm the fetus's brain and cause severe neurological problems. Consumption of omega-3 fatty acids of marine origin, particularly the consumption of DHA, was associated with benefits in the cognitive and visual areas. For example, we know that the concentration of DHA in the brain increases very quickly the pregnancy and during the first years of life. This accumulation continues during childhood and teenage years, but at a slower rate. The brain needs this substance not only to function, but also to grow. To fulfill their omega-3 needs, Health Canada recommends that pregnant women consume at least 150 grams of cooked fish every week and to favor fatty fish such as salmon, trout, Atlantic mackerel, and herring, seafood such as mussels and oysters, flaxseed and flax oil, canola oil, soybeans and soybean oil, and walnuts. We cannot currently recommend or discourage that pregnant women use omega-3 supplements because to this day, the evidence is lacking. To be safe, pregnant women could limit their caffeine consumption to about 300 milligrams per day, which corresponds to about two to three cups of coffee. Remember to drink it at least two hours before or after a meal so it does not affect the body's absorption of iron. Energy drinks or relaxing drinks should be avoided during pregnancy. These drinks contain plant-based products that were not proven safe for pregnant women. They contain high amounts of caffeine and may even contain alcohol. Many pregnant women incorrectly assume that plant-based products are harmless because they are natural. To this day, the list of herbal teas that are safe to drink during a pregnancy is very short. Some herbal teas can have toxic effects and be harmful to the pregnancy. As a result, most experts recommend the following. During the first trimester, pregnant women should take no drugs, medicinal plants, or natural health products, unless recommended by a physician or pharmacist. The following herbal teas are considered harmless if drank in moderation, two to three cups per day. Orange or orange peel herbal tea, ginger herbal tea, which has proved effective in reducing morning sickness, lemon balm herbal tea, and wild rose herbal tea. According to Health Canada, sugar substitutes can be used without risk, except for cyclamates, whose effects are still unknown. Please note that the labels of cyclamate sugar substitutes must indicate that they must only be used on a physician's recommendation. It is important not to disproportionately eat foods that contain sugar substitutes instead of more nutritious foods. Consuming excessive amounts of polyalcohol can lead to gastric discomforts and have a laxative effect. Foodborne illnesses can be detrimental to the pregnancy. Some bacteria, such as Listeria, can go through the placenta. Listeriosis is relatively rare, but the risk of contracting the disease is 15 to 20 times higher in pregnant women than in other healthy adults. This vulnerability is partly related to changes in immunity during pregnancy. Here are examples of precautions to follow. Wash your hands frequently when handling foods. Wash raw fruits and vegetables, including the peels. Properly cook meat, poultry, seafood, fish, and sausages. Thaw foods in the refrigerator or using the microwave, and not at room temperature. Follow expiration dates. As pregnant women and unborn babies are more susceptible to food poisoning, we recommend that pregnant women cook their food to a safe internal temperature. Avoid eating raw or insufficiently cooked foods. This includes meat and poultry, fish, shellfish, and seafood, as well as meals prepared with these foods, sushi, sashimi, carapacio, tartar, and ceviche. Avoid eating foods that have been in contact with raw meat, poultry, and fish, because of the risk of cross-contamination. A women's body mass index, BMI, 
before pregnancy, as well as the weight she gains during her pregnancy, both have an important influence on fetus development. They are closely tied to the baby's weight at birth and to several health indicators regarding the mother and baby. The recommended weight gain varies from one woman to the next, and sometimes from one pregnancy to the next for a single woman. Recommendations regarding weight gain during the pregnancy are based on the BMI when the woman becomes pregnant. Weight gain is gradual and corresponds to around 2 to 3 kilos, 4.5 to 6.5 pounds, in the first trimester, 500 grams, 1 pound, per week starting at the 15th week of pregnancy. This recommendation does not apply to women under 17 years old or those pregnant with twins. The weight gained by the mother includes, for example, the weight of the baby she is carrying, but also of the body changes that help protect the fetus and foster their development, such as the placenta, the growing uterus, the increasing amount of blood and the amniotic fluid. It also includes the body changes that prepare the mother for the postnatal period and breastfeeding, such as mammary glands activating in the breasts and maternal fat reserves. Your baby needs you to feed. Avoid long periods without eating and diets that will deprive you of energy and nutrients. Eating well contributes to the proper course of the pregnancy, to the adequate growth, development and health of the baby, and to maintain or improve your own health. Every weight loss diet has risks for the pregnant woman and her baby. Consult your physician before beginning or continuing a particular diet. Consultation with a nutritionist could be relevant. For any questions regarding the content of these prenatal capsules, you can contact your region's perinatality nurse.